Sadly, the Food Network has lost more than just a handful of stars through the years, and there's a good chance a few of them have escaped your attention. Keep listening to find out more about the Food Network stars you may not know passed away. Jovial, full of life, and a stellar cook, that's how most would describe Carl Ruiz. The New Jersey native worked in many restaurant kitchens, until he and his ex-wife Marie eventually opened their own restaurant. Called Marie's Italian Specialties, it was featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. The rest, as they say, is history. Ruiz was soon a regular on Food Network. His gigs included appearances on Guy's Grocery Games and Guy's Ranch Kitchen. He even had stints as a judge on many of the network's cooking competition shows. I wish I could eat your story. That sounded delicious. <laughs> Sadly, in 2019, he was visiting friends when he suddenly passed away in his sleep. USA Today reported that the cause of death had been atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which results from restricted blood flow due to clogged arteries. Co-star Guy Fieri posted on Instagram after his death, I have no words to describe what a great friend he was to me and my family. His ability to make me laugh and smile under any circumstances was only outshined by his talent as a chef. Fatima Ali had a promising career ahead of her, before her untimely death. She moved from Pakistan to America at age 18 to attend culinary school. After a stint as a sous chef at Cafe Centro, she became a contestant on Food Network's Chopped in 2012, and appeared as a contestant on Top Chef in 2017. Shortly after that filming, Ali announced she had been diagnosed with a rare type of cancer called Ewing sarcoma, which occurs in the bone or soft tissue. Refusing to let it slow her down, she continued to cook, posted updates on Instagram, and shared her story with Ellen DeGeneres. In 2018, she penned an article in Bon Appetit's Healthy-ish about being given a year to live. She described her struggle and treatment, writing, "...when we think we have all the time in the world to live, we forget to indulge in the experiences of living. When that choice is yanked away from us, that's when we scramble to feel." Ali had dreamed of owning her own restaurant. I decided to take a chance and do it myself, and now I have my own tent at this outdoor food festival in Brooklyn called Smorgasburg. She wrote about having to modify that dream, saying, I'm sketching a plan to eat my way through New York and the boroughs while I can. After she died in 2019, several stars, including Padma Lakshmi, posted tributes to the young chef. Her family paid tribute by traveling the world on the food tour she never completed. In March 2020, the world lost superstar chef Floyd Cardoz. He was known for his marriage of regional and international flavors and for his pure love of food. As he told Forbes India in one of his final interviews, being a miserable chef leads to miserable food, miserable staff, and a miserable restaurant. He started his career in India and studied in Switzerland. In New York, he opened an acclaimed restaurant, Tabla. As the New York Times said in his obituary, he was the first Indian chef to have such an influence over the New York restaurant scene. He was a winner of Top Chef Masters, and on Food Network, Floyd hosted fine dining with Floyd Cardoz. Before his passing, he shared pictures of a trip to India on Instagram. Among them, his new venture, Bombay Sweet Shop, and a sneak peek of his Season 2 appearance on Netflix's Ugly Delicious. Almost immediately after his return, he was admitted to a New Jersey hospital with a fever. He succumbed to the coronavirus a few days later. Several celebrities reacted to his passing, including Food Network's Alex Gornicelli. She posted on Twitter, I can't process it. A true gentleman in every sense, and a great credit to the chef community. He will be sorely missed. Eccentric television chef Clarissa Dixon Wright was a culinary force to be reckoned with. She was also a controversial figure. There's my opinions on food, on DEFRA, on politicians. Uh, that's where I have to be careful with the lawyers. A former lawyer, Wright was once charged with hunting offenses and used to be an alcoholic. More importantly, she was a well-respected chef and food historian. She was also one of the BBC's cheeky two fat ladies. The duo's famous show also aired on Food Network in the US. The early hit was instrumental in increasing the popularity of the channel. In it, she and chef Jennifer Patterson toured the UK to cook in new locations. And they did it with Patterson on a Triumph Thunderbird motorcycle and Wright in the sidecar. Wright was also well known for her outspokenness. When asked if the title Two Fat Ladies offended her, she clapped back, I had problems with ladies because it sounds like a public convenience. But which bit do you object to? Are you saying I'm thin? She wrote several cookbooks including the celebrated Two Fat Ladies Write Again. In 2011, she published the acclaimed A History of English Food. The Independent called it a, quote, richly informative book, and Express gave it four out of five stars. Sadly, in March 2014, she passed away at the age of 66. According to BBC America, Wright had been sick for several months prior. Carrie Simon was often called the rock and roll chef. He cooked for rock stars and politicians, and some of his biggest fans included Alice Cooper and Joe Perry. So when he died in 2015, it wasn't just culinary celebrities who were crushed. Carrie and I cooked together a long, long time ago in the pizza world. We, we started as, as pizza chefs at Little Caesars in Illinois. After years as a personal chef to the stars, he eventually opened several restaurants of his own. Simon also appeared on Food Network's Iron Chef America. But in 2013, with his career booming, he was diagnosed with a terminal brain disease. 
disease. Suddenly, he had to learn to manage multiple system atrophy, or MSA. The disorder is a sporadic progressive neurological one, like Parkinson's. In 2014, he opened up to Esquire about how hard it was to accept his MSA diagnosis, but insisted it would not slow him down. He said he still checked up on his restaurant because he didn't want the quality to slip. He explained, More than ever, I need to stay vigilant. I have to be there regardless of how I'm feeling. When he died in 2015, the Las Vegas Sun paid tribute with an article about his life. In it, he was called the quote, first and only rock and roll chef. Before Anthony Bourdain, there was the inimitable Keith Floyd. Right, my little nautical gastronauts, here we are, away from the hurly-burly, the noise, the ding-dong banging of the bell of Newland Fish Market. Initially a journalist, he developed an affinity for cooking in an unlikely place, the army. After opening his own restaurants, he hosted countless food shows. He also wrote over 20 books, so it's no wonder he was, quote, the original modern celebrity chef. His show that started it all, Floyd on Fish, aired on the BBC, but many shows that followed were also found on the Food Network UK. In 2009, he was diagnosed with bowel cancer, but he was determined to fight it. Before chemotherapy and after several operations, he said, I'm not thrilled about it, no, but what can I do? I'll get through it. Tragically, he died of a heart attack just a few hours after celebrating his partner's 65th birthday with an extravagant lunch in 2009. Ken Kostick was best known for hosting a food show with an innovative format. What's for Dinner was famous for its sitcom-like appeal and Kostick's comedic banter with co-host Mary Jo Eustace. It had more than one spin-off on TV and radio, featuring the same stars. After his death, Eustace told CBC News Network, I just want everybody to know he was a fantastic person on TV and off. The Gemini Award nominee wrote several cookbooks, including one called The $10 Gourmet, restaurant-quality meals that won't break the budget, which included recipes as well as pantry stocking tips. His show, Ken Kostick & Company, was celebrated for its guest chefs and musical sidekicks. It was also one of the first shows for Food Network Canada. In 2011, tragedy struck when Kostick was hit with acute pancreatitis. As he recovered at home after treatment, he endured a fatal complication. The Canadian chef's death was announced by his business team in April 2011. Judson Todd Allen was a finalist on the eighth season of Food Network Star in 2012. By 2018, he was close to the top and didn't show any signs of slowing down. With a degree in food science, Allen made healthy eating seem sustainable and fun. The Chicago chef called himself the architect of flavor and built a career on teaching people that big flavor could help fight unhealthy cravings. He was a chef to the stars, cooking for the likes of Steve Harvey and Jamie Foxx. In Allen's popular book, The Spice Diet, he shared a diet plan that helped Harvey lose weight and get camera ready. The book is renowned for using principles of food science to break food addiction. In an interview with Illinois alumni, he shared his personal journey with food addiction, saying, I was always the biggest kid in school. As a kid, one of the main things people bully you about is weight, and I've had to deal with that for a large part of my life. I struggled with weight my entire life. For me, it was this depressing, hard moment because I was looking at myself and I was not happy with what I saw. Allen's dedication to healthy eating made his untimely passing even more tragic. In 2018, at just 36 years old, he died at a Chicago hospital. The Chicago Tribune reported the cause of his death was an apparent heart attack. He also owned his own catering company known as Healthy Infused Cuisine and launched a popular hot sauce. Following his death, his family halted sales of the sauce. Before Jessica Vogel was on television, she worked in several renowned restaurants. Vogel started her career working at Kevin's Time before she moved on to Christine Nunn's Picnic on the Square. A stint as executive chef at Black Rebel Burger followed. Vogel's first television appearance was on Hell's Kitchen. She placed 12th on the show, and it would be a while before Vogel was ready to take on reality TV again. In 2016, she became a contestant on Food Network when she joined the chocolate-themed episode of Cutthroat Kitchen Season 11. I am the pastry queen of New Jersey. Her career looked promising. However, in her personal life, she was struggling, and Vogel passed away at just 34 years old. In her obituary, Vogel's family revealed she had alcohol and drug issues. Even though she had recently been in rehabilitation and was dedicated to changing her life, the years of abuse had taken a toll on her body. She was diagnosed with colitis, which causes inflammation of the colon. According to her fiancé, her quote, heart gave out during her colitis treatment. Before tragedy struck, the two were planning to open a restaurant together. Her former employer, Chef Nunn, spoke fondly of Vogel after her death. She said, she was really a talented chef who never reached her potential. It's a shame. Christy Codd was just getting started when a tragedy cut her promising career short. The chef's culinary journey started at home in the South, cooking Cajun cuisine with her father. Codd then attended college in Germany, where she picked up a love of European cuisine. She had also dreamed of opening her own cafe. In 2012, she was swept into the limelight while participating in season 8 of Food Network Star, even though she was the first chef to leave that season. In an interview after her appearance, she spoke about life after the show. She had catered the film Ender's Game and was pitching two food shows. 
She also spoke about her passion for healthy food, saying, Healthy does not mean boring and bland. Sadly, she and her husband Joseph Codd met an untimely death in 2015. Initially thought to be missing from their North Carolina home, the couple had in fact been killed. The victims of a home invasion gone wrong. Christy had been pregnant at the time. A suspect was arrested soon after their bodies were found, burned on his property. But it took years for courts to convict him. In 2017, handyman Robert Jason Owens, who worked as a contractor for the Cods, finally admitted to the crime, along with staging the home invasion scene. Owens said he had accidentally run the couple over and claimed to have burned their bodies only because he had been afraid of receiving the death penalty. Her friend Michael Mendez told CBS News that Christy had been, quote, a firecracker and called her, quote, a bright light. If you or anyone you know is struggling with substance abuse or mental health issues, please call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration's National Hotline at 1-800-662-HELP or 1-800-662-4357.